The mayfly is the iconic river fly. Trout and anglers look forward to this time of year for very different reasons. The trout for the all-you-can-eat buffet and the angler for the chance to catch a few fish on dry fly. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Duffer's fortnight is referred to the couple of weeks where the fishing is renowned for being easy. The trout are freely rising, filling their bellies on the abundant mayfly, less likely to be spooked by an angler making a misstep whilst wading or an awkward cast that doesn't land right. The reality of course can be very different. Anglers flock to the riverside in droves, wandering the banks and waiting for the rise to happen. This usually occurs mid-afternoon, sometimes even later. It can be difficult to find a good spot and get into position to make that crucial first cast. Once the hatch gets underway and the first few flies start to flutter off the river's surface, the excitement gets you right in the gut and you can't wait to throw that first fly at the fish. Let's take a quick look at the life cycle of the mayfly. Rather than me bumbling through trying to explain this, I have used this excellent graphic from the Wild Trout Trust and will put a link in the description to their website. If you are interested in learning more about mayfly, there is an abundance of information on the website. Let's talk about the tackle then. Today I've set up with an 8 foot 6 rod for a 3 weight. I'm using such a short rod because I know the Manningford beat starts to get a little narrow the further up the beat you progress. It's also a perfect weight to cast a dry fly, you get superb presentation. I am using a 6 foot tapered leader to a micro ring and approximately 4 foot of 4 pound fluorocarbon. Remember to degrease your leader and don't forget to treat your dry fly with your preferred floatant. The reason for going a little bit heavier on the tippet is there is always the chance of a really good fish from the deep back eddies. Despite it being Duffer's fortnight, it is always best to approach the river as carefully as possible. Wear drab clothes so you can blend into the background. A nice bright jacket or shirt might make you look good, but bright orange or pink might not be the way ahead. This just increases your chances of not spooking fish. Well today I'm on the Manningford estate and I've come to the Rushall section of the River Avon and I'm joined by Fen Oakley who's going to explain a little bit more about the Avon and particularly the Rushall beat. So at Manningford we already have two miles of fishing, of river fishing on the River Avon. Um, two years ago, uh, not last May, uh, not last March, but the March before we took on the lease of the Rushall section. So this gives us an extra two and a half miles of fishing um, of actual new river. Although some of the top bit, probably about half a mile of it, is the opposite bank of the Manningford section. We, we took that on in the beginning of that March. The end of that March was when Covid hit. So we certainly had an interesting kind of time for the first year, uh, but now we're into our second year and we're certainly getting a little bit more interest in it. Um, as you can see, it's, it's not overly manicured. Um, this is because it's, it's a wild fishery. Uh, they're wild fish in here, uh, browns and grayling. And we, you know, salmonids need a certain amount of cover. Um, it's roughly around 60% dappled shade that they need to really thrive well. So we don't cut the banks, manicure the banks, we cut pathways, we do a bit of topping here and there, uh, but we want to keep that kind of overall wild feeling to it. So uh, we always recommend that people wade it, um, especially because you're also keeping a generally lower profile in the water. With them being wild fish, stealth is key here. Um, so we do 50 pounds for a full day of uh, brown trout fishing, 
30 pound for a half day on the Rushall section and we do season tickets that are 450 for a full year meaning that you can come five times you covered your ticket and anything more than that is bonus on top guys if you're getting any value from these videos please like subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification you'll be alerted to any new videos that i put out in the future the fishing then so there's three windows of opportunity to catch these fish um, if you discount nymphs of course we are on an English chalk stream and uh, if there's a nymph in sight there's a very good chance that you may be shot the emerging dun will provide your first opportunity for some sport your second opportunity will come when the female lands on the river to lay her eggs where she's extremely vulnerable to prowling fish once a female has laid her eggs, it dies on the water, presenting the trout with a very easy meal. And this is the time where some of the big fish can come into play. So I fish this section occasionally, um, and I was fishing it Saturday. Did relatively well on this setup. So I'm fishing a seven foot six three weight rod, uh, three weight line, small rod because You've got some areas that are quite close quarters fishing, other bits open up, but this covers all scenarios, especially keeping that light of presentation. Um, I fished it with, I, I currently fish it with a double dry. So I've got a night, well, this is a seven foot tapered leader down to a three pound point. The first dropper, I've got a size 18, um, like CDC olive pattern. So this is the first fly that will go over a fish because a lot of time with these fish, you only get one or two chances with them. On my sec on my point fly, I've got a uh, like a French partridge mayfly kind of pattern. This is just to tempt up the ones that will be going for the mayfly. So they get the option of the smaller dry first, the larger dry second. So the other thing that I always recommend, without fail. If you dry fly fishing, you fish with your, your, your floatant, your gink, and I won't go anywhere dry fly fishing without a bit of Hunt's Original. This white powder, absolute miracle. It will dry off your fly, get that fish in all the time, fishing really, really well. then just a couple of points to take away take a rod that's going to meet your needs I fished with a short rod today because I knew I was going to be closed in with foliage and trees and casting would be difficult use the correct breaking strain of tippet for the fish you're fishing for I was using four pound today but it was probably excessive considering I was trying to catch wild trout but if you're in a river where there is bigger fish you don't want to lose that fish of a lifetime by having too thin a tippet and worse than that you leave a fly in the trout's mouth take care when you're approaching the river there's just no point in needlessly spooking trout be patient don't make needless casts all you will do is spook the fish you're targeting lessening your chance of success be safe be wary of the depths of water you're fishing in last time i was here i fell in and it was grayling fishing so it wasn't very pleasant well i hope you got at least one tip from this video and remember next time you go out in the river tight lines and i'll see you all next time <laughs>